electricity. Discovered in the late 1700s by Benjamin Franklin, perfected and understood by Edison, Tesla and Faraday. Unfortunately, we're meeting a very, very close end to the end of the combustion engine. Electricity is taking over again. Thanks to global warming and trying to save the polar bears, the governments are turning to lowering their greenhouse emission gases. And to do that, we need to take the combustion engine out of the domestic car. So, does this mean the end for the petrol head? Not exactly. Head was just a, a phrase given to somebody who was really interested in cars doesn't necessarily mean that you know we were changing to electric now that you can no longer be a petrol head I mean an electric head doesn't quite sound as nice but I mean obviously this car here obviously is the future it's something that you know we're going to have to get used to in the next sort of 12 years or so you won't be able to buy a sole uh, petrol or diesel electric car brand new at all so we're going to need to get used to something like this so for Audi to bring out something like this now is absolutely fantastic. This gives us a sort of insight into how the future is going to be, you know, what the sort of technology is going to be. And I'm kind of pleased to say that, you know, judging on the basis of this, the future does look bright. The thing that surprises you the most about this car is how instantaneous the power delivery is. Now, obviously, that's to be expected on a, an electric car, being that there's uh, traditionally no gearbox, there's no engine, it's effectively just direct power, instant torque from zero RPM. Now just to sort of demonstrate how sort of this effectively works, I'm about to come onto a dual carriageway here off this roundabout and I'm going to plant the throttle and the way this car takes off is just mind boggling. You know, watch this, this is me just coming onto a sort of dual carriageway now, you know, plant the throttle and, whew, you know, it is, you know, so quick I mean this thing can it's just an overtaking machine you know you can overtake something on a back road get out get in in 50 meters it's just unbelievable there's 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 no other type of car on the road uh, that you could do that in safely and the grip it has is absolutely fantastic you would never know this car weighed two and a half ton this car weighs as much as an RSQ8 and you would never know that the agility it has around the corner it hides that weight so well I mean that's helped by the weight being all on the floor I mean the battery pack is you know being distributed through the entire car you know it's even got cutouts in the floor for your feet you know because how do you thought about things like this I mean this stands on its own chassis it doesn't it's not like a recycled Q7 chassis or an A6 or something like that this is its own car you know so it's been completely designed around how this thing's going to feel for how it handles and how it drives on the road and it is just utter mind-boggling you know you would think this thing weighed about you know 15 1400 kilograms it's so agile it's got so much grip and it's not plagued by the sort of kind of thing that if you jump into a lot of these electric cars have got these silly skinny little tires on them it's got 305s on the back of it you know so it certainly isn't uh, you know being designed to be sort of kind of efficient in that way as well but let's talk about the big fat elephant in the room now the main thing about people get very stressed out about these electric cars is oh, it doesn't it doesn't have any range I mean this car will do 290 miles on a full charge albeit obviously that would be in the nice cozy summer um, not in the cold Scottish winter that you get here I mean I jumped into this car this morning fully charged and it was showing 220 miles of range but to be honest it was four degrees outside so obviously the battery temperature I've got the heated seat on you know the range is going to be affected by that but let's look at what this car actually is you know it's a, it's a GT car 
you know, it's a performance luxury car. You know, you compare this against the, some of your petrol, uh, you know, sort of kind of equivalents, things that you'd be looking at yourself, you know, things like uh, Aston Martins, you know, you, you, these cars, you know, with their V8 twin turbos, their V12s, whatever you've got in them, you're not going to be bitten much out of 300 miles range out of a tank of fuel in that. So, you know, let's compare it to what it is, and it's actually quite competitive. You know, you can actually get better than the range if you drive it sort of kind of, you know, within itself on a back country road using the, the regenerative brake and recover some energy. You know, it is actually uh, not bad range at all for what you would expect of a car of this size. I mean, most people that are going to be owning this car will probably have it as a second or third car and sort of take it out sort of for a blast now and then. So the range is never going to be an issue. But as the technology is going to get better, you know, the charging times for this are going to get better as well and going to be a lot more convenient. I mean, there is a lot of 150 kilowatt charging points popping up in the UK now, you know, and this will charge this from 0 to 80% in 23 minutes. You know, it's just, you know, that's pop in, have a coffee, you know, and then before you know it, your car's up to sort of nearly full charge again. So, you know, I, I think in the future, I, I don't think that charging times are going to be a worry, especially on a car like this, you know, which does have a, you know, a 90 odd kilowatt hour battery in it. You know, it will charge pretty fast. Now, don't get me wrong, on a traditional uh, home 7 kilowatt charger, the car will be the, the guts of 12 hours plus to, uh, to charge up to full. But, you know, again, for all the times that, you know, the kind of person that's going to buy this car is going to take it out, you know, it's not going to be an issue whatsoever. And most of the DC uh, chargers that are out and about nowadays are 50 kilowatts again, will charge this car in a couple of hours or so to 80% battery. So, you know, as the technology gets better, the charging times will get better. So let's have a look at the ergonomics in this car. The thing I love about it is the driving position. This thing is fantastic. And I think it's helped with these comfy seats. Now this one is the Vosprung model, so this is the kind of top spec one. It does have pretty much near enough every option spec onto it. You know, like these seats, these are the uh, upgraded seats which you only get if you go for the Comfort Sound Pack Plus or of course the Vosprung model. Um, you know, heated, fully ventilated, massage function as well which I've got on at the moment and I could safely say that it's uh, quite a nice comfort to have if you have quite a bad back like me but even the driving position of the car you know you sit very low down um, you've got a lovely steering wheel you've got Audi's lovely virtual cockpit plus in here as well and one of the best things about it they've not bent down the route of the normal e-tron with the daft dual touch screens the inside of this car is like a sort of kind of hybrid in between the look of a, a big e-tron or a6 merged in with the new a3 it's got the climate control unit and everything out the a3 with these lovely toggle switches rather than a touch screen the center console is lovely it's nice and high all trimmed in leather same with the dash all leather and everything all trimmed along here as well really is a lovely place to sit inside now it's got Audi's traditional MMI screen, which is pretty much in every model nowadays, which is not a bad thing because it's a really good fluent system. All Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatible as well. Um, you've got adaptive cruise control in the Vorsprung. You've got this lovely panoramic full length glass ceiling uh, and it's very spacious in the back as well. I mean, a lot of people complain that <clears throat> you know, it lacks a bit of headroom in the back seats, but again, it's actually not that bad. I mean, I'm five foot 10 and I feel it's actually perfect in the back of there. I mean, if you're much bigger than 6'2", you might need to sort of kind of crouch a little bit, but again, for a big GT car like itself, you know, it's no worse off than anything else on the market. So let's head back outside now and get a quick look around this e-tron GT. I just absolutely love the styling on this car. Audi have really, really done it and nailed it with this one. It looks so futuristic, yet retains a lovely, lovely, lovely shape. I mean, I love the sort of two kind of three coloured grille on the front of this one with the silver, the grey, and then obviously the body colour. Now, you can get the centre grille colour coded to the uh, the colour of the car, which I think just looks too plain. I love this sort of kind of on this one, the, the three uh, the three different colours. Uh, this one being the Vorsprung, of course, does have the, uh, the best light technology that Audi do. So not only are these matrix lights, they're actually matrix laser lights, which actually has the ability to project your full beam twice the distance that your regular full beam to as well as matrix technology by blanking out the traffic and everything like that with the shutters so absolutely great bit of technology on this car and of course it's got the uh, as you've seen in the intro there the uh, the sort of kind of lights that make a sort of flicker when you turn it on and off as well which is just a, a nice little cue there 
Now, this car comes with the 21-inch uh, alloy wheels. Now, of course, the regular GT will come with a 20-inch, but the 21s in this four-sprung model, I think, suit it just perfectly. Um, fill the arches really, really nicely as well. Now, some of the vintage on this car is actually real. Audi have obviously got a tradition of uh, putting little fake vents here and there, but as you can see on the side here, these vents are there for uh, aerodynamic and for uh, cooling purposes as well. So how does this one actually feel on the road, you know, just day to day driving? Now again, this one being the Vorsprung, or if you spec one with the Comfort and Sound Pack Plus, you get the fully uh, air suspension on the car, which to be honest, is I would absolutely recommend it. This car rides fantastic. Even with 21 inch wheels on it, you know, with the air suspension, even in dynamic mode, it glides over the roads just lovely. It's got, you know, it, it handles the bumps, it handles everything very, very, very easily. So it's something that I would recommend specking if you were going to be spending that I mean I think the Comfort and Sound Pack Plus is the guts at eight and a half thousand pounds an option on the regular standard GT model but it's absolutely worth it uh, if you do want all the bells and whistles you do get it with the Vorsprung model I mean this car is tested it's around about 108,000 pounds and it pretty much has everything you know you've got to compare this to the car that's probably its main rival which is the Porsche Taycan which and to be honest is the same car underneath you know they're, they're generally the same One's got a Porsche badge, one's got the Audi badge. You know, you'll pay a wee bit more for a Porsche, uh, just that wee bit, you know, sort of more, not much, you know, 10, 15 grand more for a like for like spec, you know, but you're really just paying for the Porsche badge on the front. And I think the Audi looks better interior wise and exterior wise as well. I think it's a better looking car. So just a little bit sort of kind of summary here. So the Etron GT, is it something that I would recommend that you come and buy? Yeah, I would. I mean, it's not going to be in everybody's budget. I mean, I know it's a, you know, a 90 to, you know, 120,000 pound car, depending on what spec you got, whether that's the regular one or the RS model. But this thing is absolutely fantastic. You know, it, it really ticks all the boxes. If you are looking for something comfortable, modern, you know, built for the future, um, you know, you're helping save the environment at the same time, zero emission car at the end of the day, you really should go for this. You know, this is the, the new, GT car, this replaces your Aston Martins, you know, all your big GT cars that you have currently with V12s and V8 twin turbos on it. You know, this thing has the performance of these cars and nothing will beat the response of this, you know. You jump into anything, there's nothing beating this for not to 100 miles an hour, you know, for the same price bracket and the same sort of kind of practicality that this car has. So what's the headline figures on this uh, e-tron GT? So it has 530 brake horsepower on the regular model with overboost mode, which is well more than enough. Now you do get 620 in the RS model, which actually makes it um, you know, one of the most powerful production uh, Audis on the market, which is, 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 is quite good considering that that's going to be the future. This is Audi showcasing you know, what they've got to come. So unlike a lot of electrical cars, um, this Audi e-tron GT actually has a two-speed gearbox. So it's done that to give you that sort of kind of instant acceleration rather than a sort of kind of, you know, constant gear, which the electric cars do. They don't, when I say gear, they don't really have gearboxes. You know, they're, they're restricted by, you know, how fast the electric motor can spin. But these e-tron GTs do have a two-speed gearbox in them. So I've got that low ratio um, in there, you know, that you can take off and, uh, you know, give you that instant acceleration, which, you know, if you can experience it for yourself you really do notice it and it really does make a difference so it was a very very good thing for Audi to put into this car. So what about the noise? You know a lot of these people complain that these electric cars haven't got the you know, character and the uh, you know, poise of a normal petrol or uh, even some diesels nowadays. You know they don't have that sound that you would expect for the power and performance this car has. Audi have engineered it, um, you know, they've engineered their own sound in this car and it, it actually sounds pretty good to be honest. You know, even pulling up, you, you know, if, if you had your eyes shut, you wouldn't know it was an electric car. It does actually make a noise when it pulls up. You know, it's got that synthesized sound in it and it really does sound good. I mean, you put your foot down and it really does have that sort of kind of bumbly sound, you know, very futuristic sounding as well. So, you know, yeah, I, I would actually, uh, you know, think that's quite a good thing. And being a petrol head myself, you know, sound was always a big thing to me, how a car sounds. And, you know, didn't get me wrong, it's not going to be the same as a screaming V10 or a V8 or anything like that. But, you know, it, it sounds good, to be honest. It does, it does sound pretty good. Other than the Taycan? I wouldn't say so. A lot of 
people will sit and go, oh, the Tesla gets more range, blah, 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 blah. But there's not really a Tesla on the market that's sort of comparable to this. I mean, your Model X and your Model I are a lot, are a lot bigger. Your Model 3 is really just a sort of kind of saloon car. Um, you know, there's nothing really on the market apart from the Taycan that looks and goes as well as this car. So, you know, Audi and Porsche have got this sort of kind of market all to themselves. I mean, the Taycan's the only really one that you would consider against the e-tron GT. So what realistically are you actually going to get out of the battery range? Because you've got a lot of people that will actually say to you, you know, ah, it says 300 miles on the range clock, but I actually only done 200 miles. I mean, as with any electric car, it's all down to your driving style and how you drive. I mean, these cars don't necessarily like just sitting on the motorway, like the old diesels that you used to get in the company cars. These cars are designed to recover energy. So that's where it gets its range from, is recovering lost energy, normally through coasting and braking. So these cars are at home on a back road, or even in the town to sense when you're using the brakes a lot, you're doing a lot of coasting downhill, you know, it'll recover a lot of energy through that. Now it's quite easy to work out what range you're actually going to get. Now if you look at obviously your um, your display there, it will give you what's called a, a, a consumption which is in miles per kilowatt hour. Now this has round about, uh, I think it's about a 90 kilowatt hour battery. So really what you want to do to get this sort of maximum range, um, you know, you need to be averaging in this probably round about 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour to get the full, you know, just under 300 miles of range out of this car, which I will be honest, is going to be very, very difficult to do. You know, I mean, I have been talking about it in this car now, so I even, you know, put my foot down now and again, I'm only averaging just under two miles per kilowatt hour. Now, I have driven this car in the correct manner, you know, and the very best that I got on a sort of kind of 45 minute journey was an average around about 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which I thought was, you know, me trying, but, you know, not driving excessively slow, you know, the way I would normally be doing it. So, I could probably see in the summertime, you know, nudging close to that three miles per kilowatt hour. So, uh, you know, I don't see it being a problem in terms of uh, range. Uh, like I say, it's basically all the way down to how you drive and your driving style that needs to change the most rather than the car. So anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed the review of the e-tron GT here. Um, I will be doing another electric car next, so keep a lookout for that. My next episode I'm actually going to do on the uh, mid-range um, electric car in the Audi range, which will be the e-tron. Um, we have a sportback version um, on at the moment, so I'm going to do a wee review on that again, just because it seems to be the future, so you know, I'd like to touch on a bit more of that. But um, as I say, if ever you have enjoyed the video, uh, please subscribe to the channel. I will be trying to put out these as, uh, as, as often as I can, um, you know, when in, I, I do have the time, of course, obviously working in the dealership. You know, we are a busy uh, dealership, but feel free if you uh, are interested in giving me a call, pop me an email, uh, links will be in the description to the website and uh, my email address as well. Get in touch with me here at Dundee Audi and uh, we'll be happy to take the inquiry further. But hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you on the next one.